It's interesting that one of the most researched areas in computer learning, machine learning, is developing pattern recognition. A great deal of the direction that computing is going is reliant on that ability for machines, for computers, to develop the ability to compare things and to see how they're similar and how they're different and how to use that to predict the future, how to use that to refine a process, how to use that to determine what substance might cure a disease. In regards to human beings, the economist uh, Gary Smith and the data scientist Jay Cordes wrote, and to quote, the survival and reproductive payoff from pattern recognition gave humans an evolutionary advantage over other animals. Indeed, it has been argued that the cognitive superiority of humans over all other animals is due mostly to our evolutionary development of superior pattern processing, end quote. Early in our development, and still today, the ability to recognize patterns gave humans the ability to recognize where they should best look for food, what kind of weather may be coming. It gave them the ability to understand seasons and to know what they needed to do at one time of the year to prepare for another time of the year. It gave them the ability to recognize what foods may be nutritious and which ones may be dangerous. It also gave them the ability to recognize what partner may be a good partner for them and which one's not. Throughout history, the more successful human beings were often the best at pattern recognition. In modern times, pattern recognition has led to whole schools of art like cubism or symbolism. It has led to design tendencies and trends. A good fashion designer goes out and looks through their culture and picks out the significant trends, the patterns that are arising, and then bases their designs on that so that they are both predicting and then leading where patterns, trends are going. Any successful business person is typically very aware, either consciously or unconsciously, of patterns. The patterns that are playing out in the marketplace, the patterns that make for good hires, for finding employees that will match the needs of the business, or from the other side of it, the person wanting to be employed picks the best jobs to apply for or to prepare for based on the patterns that they find compatible for themselves and match that to the area of career that they want to go into. We could go on and on, but we're sure that you can think of numerous areas and ways that that ability to recognize patterns is important in your life. Let's do take a minute, though, to think about it in the area of education, in the area of learning. As we've talked about before, unfortunately, much of education these days is just preparing for tests, memorization to a large degree. And there's not much focus on how to really develop an ability to recognize patterns and the underlying organizing principles that we find in nature and in life. Developing a greater capacity to recognize patterns gives us a much greater ability to predict, to predict where things are going, to predict what solutions are going to work. And in the classroom, it gives us the ability to predict possible directions of solutions to grasp what may be the outcomes that we need beyond memorizing, beyond just being able to stick things in formulas. That formulistic learning is a low order of learning. Pattern recognition is a much higher level of learning. There's a place for both. 
Given all that, how do we go about developing a better ability to recognize patterns? There's a lot of different ways available. Let us suggest to you just a couple ways that we see being very powerful, and if persisted in, if practiced, that can be very helpful for developing these capacities to recognize patterns and apply that ability to predict in useful ways. The approach that we found the most widely helpful is simply asking a question. That question is, what's this like? If we're studying cell biology, we can ask, what's this like elsewhere in nature? This ecological system that takes place within a cell, where else do we see similar patterns? Do we see them in how a jungle organizes itself or how a human community organizes itself and the interaction between the various parts of that? And we can take those insights that are gained from that pattern recognition and use that to understand what are the basic principles, what can we expect, what can we predict. And it also gives us an easier way to integrate those new understandings. If you meet somebody named Paul and you have another friend named Paul, it's easier to remember the second person's name because we can associate it with, oh, they're the same as this. And so again, it benefits our learning, our understanding to be able to see those overlaps. As we've mentioned elsewhere, if we're studying chemistry and we ask, what's this like? And we start to notice, oh, these atoms interact like people do, that certain people connect with other people and they form groupings in certain ways. And we begin to use our understanding of those patterns to understand chemistry. It often greatly enhances the ease with which we catch on to chemistry. There are numbers of approaches that have been developed used to enhance our ability to recognize patterns. Our favorite comes from the delightful David Gordon. He shared this with us many, many years ago, and that is to play this game that goes pick two random objects and then ask ourselves, how are they alike? For an example, a toaster is like a hummingbird. And then we ask ourselves, how are those two things alike? Well, they both do better when we feed them, and they both generate a lot of heat. And most people like having them around. Now, none of these connections are like, oh, wow, that's so profound. Although at times doing this, you will find those kinds of connections. Asking the question about how is one thing like another forces our brain to begin looking for those patterns that connect, those ways in which these two things are similar. Let's try another one. A book is like a car. They both take us on journeys, and they both are the result of the advancement of the mechanical age. And done well, they both took a lot of thought to produce one that people would like. Now, the advantage of this game is, obviously, it can be done anywhere. And it can be done amongst friends. It can be done on our own. Over time, it strengthens the circuits in our brain that make it easier to recognize patterns in diverse realms. All of this, again, makes learning easier. Some researchers would say that this may be the most important component of intelligence. Babies use it from day one to figure out their world, to figure out how to engage, how to speak a language, how to navigate their world, how to find what they're looking for. Imagine all the ways that you'll benefit as you practice this over time. This will be fun to do, and it'll make you smarter.